7-3, more multiplication properties of exponents. So our objective in this section is to raise a power to a power and to raise a product to a power. And we can use the properties of exponents to simplify a power raised to a power or a product raised to a power. So just like in previous sections, we are going to use the repeated multiplication property to simplify a power raised to a power and see what it looks like. So we start with x to the fifth squared, which means x to the fifth times x to the fifth. And from 7-2, we know that we can take these exponents if they have the same base, which they do, and we can add the exponents together, which would be 5 plus 5 which is really the same thing as 5 times 2. So notice that x to the 5th squared is the same thing as x to the 5 times 2 power. So raising a power to a power is the same as raising the base to a product of exponents. And that's going to help us to simplify a power to a power. Okay. So our property is that when we raise a power to a power, we're going to multiply the exponents together. Okay, so if you have a to the m to the n power, that becomes a to the m times n, where a is not zero, and both m and n are rational. Okay, so we're just going to multiply them together. So 5 to the 4th squared becomes 5 to the 8th, m to the 3 to the 5th becomes 15th, and this works with fractional exponents uh, as well. We just have to multiply the fractions together. Okay, so what is the simplified form of n to the 4th to the 7th? So this just becomes n to the 4 times 7, which is going to be n to the 28th power. Okay, uh, again, works with fractions. Okay, remember to multiply two fractions together. We multiply the top and multiply the bottom. So this becomes x to the 2 thirds times 1 half, which is x to the 2 6 power. But of course, we never leave a fraction unsimplified. So that would be x to the 1 third power, dividing both by 2. Okay, let's try some guided problems. So, power to a power for all these, we're just going to multiply the exponents together. So, this becomes p to the 20th, 5 times 4, and p to the 20th, 4 times 5. Okay? This is p to the 1 eighth power, 1 half times 1 quarter, and this is p also to the 1 eighth power. So, it is a to the m times n equal to a to the n times n true for all integers? Yes, because what property? Multiplication is commutative. So it doesn't matter which way I do um, the multiplication to combine the two exponents. We can use order of operations when you simplify an exponential expression. Okay? So that means exponents come before we put two bases together before we put multi before multiplication. So when I do this, I'm going to have the first thing I'm going to do is going to be y to the third. Oh, let's move this down a little bit for a second. Clear that out. Move that down. Okay, here we go. Y to the third times y to the power to a power, I'm going to multiply these exponents together, so it's going to be negative 10 over 2, which is negative 5, which gives me y to the negative 2, which is the same thing. I don't leave that because it is a negative exponent. It can be simplified more, so this gives me 1 over y to the positive 2. Negative exponents go to the bottom of a fraction. All right, let's try, let's try those got it problems that we slid down here. Okay, again, these two come first. So that'd be x squared. Uh, that is a negative exponent, which is okay. 
times x to the negative 24. That gives me x to the negative 22 when I add them together, which is 1 over x to the 22nd power. Okay. Negative 2. 5 thirds times 3 would be w to the 5th power. Add those together, and we get w to the 3rd. Uh, negative times a negative in part C. Negative times a negative gives me a positive, so that's a positive 5 over 2 power. And then S to the 3 over 2. When I add them together, I would get S to the 8 over 2 power, which is 4. Okay, so a lot of simplification there. Uh, hopefully, uh, no problems. Okay. So we can also use repeated multiplication to simplify an expression like 4m to the 1 half all to the third. So that means that I'm going to take everything in the parentheses and multiply it three times, which means the 4 gets multiplied together three times and the m to the 1 half power. So notice that 4 to the third and m to the 3 over 2 are now the simplified form, and I can... I can uh, raise 4 to the third power to get 64. The point is, is that everything inside the parentheses got raised to the third power, the 4 and the m to the 1 half. And this leads us to our next property, which is called a product to a power. So to raise a product to a power, raise each factor to the power and multiply. So we have a times b both to the n power, it turns into a to the n, b to the n, as long as a and b are not zero, and n is a rational number. Okay, And we can see it in the examples, 3x to the fourth turns into 81x to the fourth, and 4b to the 3 over 2 turns into 8b to the 3 over 2. Remember, 4 to the 3 over 2 is the same thing as 2 to the third, which is the same thing as 8. Right, we take the square root of four and raise it to the third power. Okay. Which expression represents the area of the square? Well, the formula for area of the square is the side of the square squared. Okay. So that means the area is going to be five x to the third squared, which is five squared and x to the third squared, which is 25x power to a power, I multiply. So my answer is D. Okay, raise both to the third power. So seven to the third power is gonna be, oops, seven to the third power is 343. And m to the 27th power. Couple different ways to approach these two problems. I could raise both of those to the negative 4 power. Let's try that method first, then we'll look at a different method for c. So I could take 2 to the negative 4th power and z to the negative 4th power. And because both of those are negative exponents, they turn into fractions, 2 to the 4th, z to the 4th, which is the same thing as 1 over 16z to the 4th. Okay, that's one method. Another method is to do the, change the exponent to a positive first. So I can um, automatically put it in the bottom of a fraction by leaving everything inside the parentheses exactly the same, and now I can change the positive exponent to a, or sorry, the negative exponent to a positive exponent. So this gives me one over nine g to the eight. Right. And we could, oh, here we go. <clears throat> Simplifying an expression with products take it slow, okay? So we have one term raised to the 10th, another term raised to the third power. 
Okay, so I have to do the exponent come before multiplication. So this turns into n, 1 half times 10 is 5, times, let's just raise everything to the fourth power in here, four, or to the third power, 4 to the third power is 64, m to the third, n, negative 2 thirds times 3 becomes negative 2. These two can now go together by addition. So we have 64 m to the third n to the third. Okay. The trick to these is just to take them slow and make sure that you see everything that's going on. Power to a power, I'm going to multiply exponents. Don't forget it's negative because negative times a positive is negative. 3 to the 4th is 81. x to the 4th, y to the 5 times 4 would be 20. Now, I could move this to the bottom of a fraction, or I can just add those two together, and they cancel each other out because they turn into 0. And anything to the 0 power is just a 1. So 1 times 81 will still be 81. Uh, 3 to the 4th power, we already said that, is 81. C would be 20 over 2, which would be 10. We'll get to that in a second. And then C to the 6th. So 81 C to the 10th times C to the 6th, which is 81 C to the 16th. All right, big numbers over here. 6 to the third power is 216. A to the third, B to the third. Okay. And then, we need a little more room here. Let's, uh, let's move this over here. Uh, 5 squared is 25. A to the negative 6. So 216 times my 25 there is 5,400. A, 3 plus negative 6 gives me negative 3. And then B to the third. And we're not done yet because we have a negative exponent there. So 5,400 is not a negative exponent. It stays where it is. B to the third is not a negative exponent. But A to the third moves to the bottom of a fraction. And we can use the property of raising a product to a power to solve problems involving scientific notation, just like we did in the last section. For example, to simplify 3 times uh, 10 to the 8th power, you raise both the 3 and the 10 to the 8th to the 2nd power. So it would be 9 times 10, not 8 squared, because power to a power, you multiply exponents, so it would be 9 times 10 to the 16th. Okay. The expression, 1 half, well, let's write this down, gives the kinetic energy in joules. So my expression is going to be 1 half mv squared. Gives the kinetic energy in joules of an object with a mass in kilograms traveling at a speed of v meters per second so m is in kilograms v is meters per second and if you didn't know what a joule is it is simply a way to uh, a unit of energy uh, and it's equal to the work done on an object okay and its units are kilogram meter squared per second squared so if V is in meters per second and we square it, and M is in kilograms, we have kilograms meters squared per second squared, which is just a, all right, a joule, okay? Named after James Prescott Joule, an English physicist, in case you were wondering. All right, so what is the kinetic energy of an experimental unmanned jet with a mass of, first one half, 1.3 times 10 to the third kilograms traveling at a speed of 
3.1 times 10 to the third meters per second. Okay, one half is part of the formula, the squared is part of the formula. Okay, so first I'm going to do one half times 1.3 times 3.1 squared. And I get 6.2, let's call it 2.5, times 10. Now I'm going to add exponents. This one is a 6, and we get 3 more right there. Okay. One more. Going to use the same formula for our got a problem here. So our formula is one half mv squared so that's one half times mass 2.5 times 10 to the fifth speed 3 times 10 squared squared so we get one half times 2.5 times 3 squared, which is 9, which gives me 11.25 times 10 to the, that's a 4, 10 squared squared. Add it to 5, we get 9. However, that number is not in scientific notation, so my answer would be 1.125 times 10 to the 10th power. So, lesson check, simplify each expression. Power to a power, we multiply exponents. So that would be n to the 18th. This would be b to the negative 21, which would be 1 over b to the 21st power. Remember to raise 3 to the 4th power to get 81a squared when we multiply a half times 4. And here, square the 9 first before, and the x to the 1 half first before we put it together with x to the 10th there. Uh, for scientific notation, right, you're going to square the 4. And so this would be 16 times 10 to the 10th, 5 times 2. But again, change it to 1.6 times 10 to the 11th. Okay. And with negative exponents in scientific notation, we don't put that on the bottom of a fraction. We just leave it there. So. What was 2 to the 5th? 32 to the 5th is, so this would be 32 times 10 to the uh, negative 15th. Now, when we move the decimal one spot to the left here, we are going to make this exponent bigger. So it turns into 10 to the negative 14. Uh, number seven, compare and contrast the property for raising a power to a power to the property of multiplying a power with the same base. Powers with the same base, when you put them together, you add exponents, power to a power, you multiply them. One, sim ooh, one student simplified x to the fifth plus x to the fifth to x to the tenth. Bad. A second student simplified x to the fifth plus x to the fifth to two x to the fifth. Good. Okay. When we multiply, if this was multiplication, then the first student would be correct. Then we would uh, multiply, then we would add the exponents together. Okay. If we have addition, okay, those are just like terms that we can just put together. Uh, I'm going to leave number nine up to you, write four different expressions that are equivalent to uh, this expression right here. Well, x squared is one of them. Um, you know, anything that can just reduce. Uh, that the that can be equal to x squared is going to be equivalent to this so use your imagination and that's seven dash three more multiplication properties of exponents